So let me ask you, would you prefer to live in a smart city or not? And we're talking all things about smart cities today. And I'm John Harris. Welcome to another episode of Exponential Radio. Look, the, the, the whole thing is that there are going to be a number of sensors that are connecting everything within cities. So you will have your services connected on the internet. You'll have your roads connected, your utilities, uh, and it will be managed in a much more coordinated, effective and efficient way. Um, the, the energy, the logistics, traffic, etc., um, even the design. I mean, you've seen Twin Towers, they've designed factories and seen bottlenecks, they do it digitally. They can do the same, well, they will do the same for cities. So there are positives as we chat about these ideas and th things to think about, and there are negatives. Perhaps you see an opportunity here for yourself to, to get involved in some way. But on the positive side, although some of these I'm a little bit skeptical about, this is things that people have been saying. Um, so resource efficiency, I can understand that. Obviously, we'll be more efficient with how uh, water is allocated, electricity, is, et cetera, high periods, low periods, and so on and so forth. Um, rising productivity, I can understand that's things like vertical farming especially. Um, increased density, whether this is a good thing or not, I don't know. Because um, if I've seen some of the high rises in the Far East, they don't look too good to me. But then again, the line in the Middle East looks more intriguing, interesting. So we'll see how that pans out. Um, it will have an improvement in, in, in the quality of life. And specifically in the environment, I can imagine that there will be um, some some better ideas and less pollution put it that way um, and of course people having things within the city limits will give you access to more resources uh, further to that on the, on the bright side we have lower costs of services supposedly it just seems to me that they will lower costs and then government seem to keep putting the prices up but that's the idea um, state resources are, will be more transparent so this is an important one to have transparency when it comes to how our resources are being, our monies are being spent on, on resources anyway. Decreasing crime, um, certain crime, yeah. Uh, we'll talk about other things, but your, your normal criminality will become more difficult. Um, to what degree that's going to become intrusive, we'll have to see. Um, increased mobility, this again, I'm not sure about. So you'll have automated transport system sure but how far you let it go i don't know we got these 15 minute cities so these are all things that we're going to have to try and figure out uh you know what's going to be the legislation and, and the regulation the environment around the future of cities clean energy um or cleaner energy it's it, these things will sound great but as we know they're very 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 difficult problems to actually solve uh, decentralized production uh, increased uh, reliance on 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 or so I say resilience as far as temperature and climate and so on. So they're going to try and make things that but you have a less carbon footprint, a lower carbon footprint, and create less problems with the climate. Though, again, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole because we know that this is a very very tricky subject. Um, reduction in pollu uh, pollution, which I've already said, and then. Access to education, which we're getting more and more of because people are having to do it online. So it doesn't really matter if you're in a city then, does it? But anyway, um, some of the other things, quicker access to market, which is also true, for sure. If things are being produced within the city limits and obviously can be distributed, if it's not coming from, from distance. Um, more employment, this again, I don't see. With the rise, as we've spoken many times, on this podcast of, of, of AI, the general AI, and specifically super AI, I think, I believe down the line in the future, work will become obsolete. Anyway, my own opinion. Um, and e-governance. We've spoken about this before where governments and governance, a lot of it will become electronic, digitized. Um, it does worry me in ways. It didn't before. The ideas all sound great, but we've seen what happened to uh, elections and uh, hacking of, of machines and so on and so forth so until we can get stop the hacking which is now we're going to talk about some of the negatives and one of them is cyber attacks um, uh, these are all politicized as well so that doesn't help the other thing that we've got negative we got to think about is a collapsing energy grid as we transition between uh, renewables and and traditional energy 
So we'll have to see how that plays out because they're trying to rush this thing too fast as far as I'm concerned. And of course, the big one again is surveillance and privacy. And we've seen in the Far East, seen some very scary clips, how people are being uh, identified and photo with uh, mobile devices from enforcement and then checked on their credit score, checked on their anything that they shouldn't be doing, they have been doing, and it's becoming very dangerous. Um, you cannot just suppress a population completely like this. Um, there's being forced, and I think there's going to be consequences. But anyway, so be it. Um, culture is going to change as well within the cities. We're definitely going to see a change in culture uh, as people become more digitized and change um, of behavior will also occur because um, as people change within how they do things, their, ha their habits also change. So, so those are some of the things to think about. You can always get more uh, information on our previous episodes at johnarthurharris.blogspot.com. And as always, we will see you in the next episode.